Make sure you grab it, put your name on it, email address and phone number, and just check one of the circles in the back of anything that you're interested in helping out with. We love to, we love help. Uh, speaking of help, we do have some upcoming events here at City Church. First of all, I just want to remind people that we do have prayer here on Saturdays at 11. So the church is open at Saturdays at 11 if you'd like to join Shirley and her team uh, to say, uh, uh, to join her in prayer uh, for many things around the church and outside of the church and the community and for our families and for our country. Uh, feel, you feel free to just walk in. Um, also, Wednesday nights at 7, we do have uh, weekly prayer as well. So if you'd like to get connected with that, uh, also let me know. We can connect you with that as well. Uh, next week is going to be May 5th, which is going to be the first Sunday of May, which is a special French Corner Communion service. So uh, we'd like for everybody to come on out, invite your friend, invite your family. We do have some food, uh, which is a great way for everybody to connect. So it's a great way for everybody to stick around after the service and just enjoy some time with each other with some food, some lovely food. Uh, so we're expecting, again, another full table. Uh, last month was amazing. We just stretched the table out here. And like I said last week, this 
room here looked like a cafeteria. It was just every seat was filled, and we were eating, and we were having a good time. And it was very uh, social. We had a great time in fellowship. We want to do that again this time on May 5th. So if you'd like to help out, please put your name down on the, the sign-up sheet that's just outside here. And whatever you'd like to bring, we'd love as much help as possible. The week after that is May the 12th, uh, which is Mother's Day. So we're going to have a special Mother's Day service. So make sure you arrive to that. Bring your friends and family to that. We love to take an opportunity to honor the mother, honor the, honor the mothers, honor the mothers here at City Church, uh, which is May 12th. And speaking of May 12th, uh, Open Door Health Life Choices Center. Uh, they gave us a brochure to let us know that they will be bringing in bottles. Uh, so those bottles are going to be outside of the sanctuary. They're going to be uh, by the information table. So make sure you grab one. Uh, we fill it up with change and we bring it in. It goes towards a good cause. So uh, young mothers that might have uh, might be a mother unexpectedly that need extra support, things like that. They're in trouble situations. Uh, we love to be able to help and support them as much as we possibly can. So we do allow this program to come in between Mother's Day and Father's Day. Those bottles will be at, at Father's Day. They will be collecting the bottles and they will disappear. So whatever we, we bring, we bring during that time and fill those bottles. So I'm going to ask Steve to come on up, and he's going to say a prayer for City Church. Let's welcome Steve. Thank you for visiting. God bless you all. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege of being able to gather together unto you this morning. Your word says, unto you all nations shall gather. Father, we gather this morning. Thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for the wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus. That's the basis upon which we stand, the rock, this morning. The everlasting rock on which we have placed our faith in you. And we have received that which is of you, which is of your Spirit. Father, we are grateful. I want us to lift up our voice this morning. Let's thank God. Let's thank Him for this past week. Let's thank Him for providing for us, for protecting us. Let's thank Him for leading us aright in this past week.
want you to look at somebody and I want you to say, you make mistakes. And then you look back at them and say, yeah, well, so do you. <laughs> However, we make mistakes, but it doesn't mean it's the end. Y'all know what baseball is. Y'all know what the Hall of Fame is, right? All the sports now have their big Hall of Fames. They, they put their best players in there. There was a player called Mickey Mantle. He's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Did you know he struck out 1,700 times? Do you know he got on base by walk? He walked to the base without hitting the ball 1,300 times. Do you know that if you put all those times together, that would be six consecutive seasons that Mickey Mantle never hit the ball? Yeah, he's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. In the book of Hebrews, there is a faith hall of fame. People who are mentioned because they are considered heroes of the faith. Samson was a hero to the people with a supernatural strength, yet biblical account equally highlights his epic failures. He gave into many weaknesses of the flesh and made numerous mistakes in his life. And in the end, he returned to the Lord. Samson, blinded and humbled, finally realized the true source of his great strength his dependence on God. Samson was on his way. You know the story of the jawbone? See, God said, stay away from them foreign women. They're trouble. Of course, those are the women you like. Don't tell somebody they can't have something, because that's what they want. So off he goes to see this lady named Delilah. So he's going to see someone he's not supposed to be going to see. He's walking down a road that he's not supposed to be on. Philistines surround him and think this is our chance to take him out. Didn't have a sword, didn't have a shield, but he looked down and he saw the bones of a donkey. He picked up the jawbone and that's not the miracle. The miracle is the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. See, that's what you have to look at in the story of Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he took out the Philistines. On his way to somewhere he shouldn't have been going. On a road that he shouldn't have been on. Aren't you glad sometimes... You've been on a road you shouldn't be on and you're making a mistake but the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you saves you right? A trap door doesn't open up and you just fall through and God just says well I'm on to the next person who else can I call? We make mistakes and God knows we do David, a man after God's own heart. David, the shepherd boy king, looms large in the pages of Scripture. All the great military victories. that He's, he's a great king. He's a giant, a giant killer. And he's ranked among one of the most notable heroes of the faith. Yet he lied, committed adultery, and murder. So what was it about David's character that made him such a favorite of God? Was it his zest for life and passion for love of God? Or was it his unshakable faith and trust in God's endless mercy? We're here because of his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness. Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yet we make mistakes. There was a janitor of the first, sec uh, first security bank in Boise, Idaho. He accidentally put a box of 8,000 checks worth $840,000 on a trash table. The operator of the paper shredder dumped all the contents into the machine, cutting them into quarter-inch shreds and dumping them to a garbage can outside the bank. 
Most of the checks had been cashed at the bank and were waiting shipment to a clearinghouse, and their loss would result in a bookkeeping, bookkeeping nightmare because most of them were still unrecorded, and the bankers could not know who paid what to whom. That's a big mistake. What did they do? They reclaimed all the shredded pieces and reconstructed each check individually. Could you imagine? So 50, empl 50 employees worked in two shifts for six hours a day inside six rooms. Now I know some of you like doing a puzzle. But that's just a little off the rails right there. Truth is, we all make mistakes. We've all said things we wish we could take back. We've all done things we wish we wouldn't have done. The bottom line is that no one in this room is perfect. Here's a mistake. You ever order something and get something different? Right? Somebody somewhere makes a mistake. So there was a brand new building, an office building opening up, and they were having a ribbon ceremony and all this stuff for this new building. And the new building was opening and one of the owner's friends wanted to send flowers. Went to send a big thing of flowers to say congratulations. And this flowers arrived at the business site. And the owner read the card and it said, rest in peace. The owner was angry, called the florist. After he told the florist of the obvious mistake and how angry he was, the florist said, Sir, I'm really sorry for the mistake, but rather than getting angry, you should imagine this. Somewhere there's a funeral taking place, and the flowers read, Congratulations on your new location. <laughs> yes, we all make mistakes. And sometimes when we mess up, we don't just mess up a little bit. We really royally mess up and we embarrass ourselves so bad that we wish we could run away. Maybe not come back. There was a drum major, a majorette. They lead at the front of the marching band. They have the big uh, baton. They spin it and put it behind their back. They throw it up. They catch it. They do all this cool stuff. And then they're going down. This happened in Ventura, California. He walked underneath a 4,000 volt power line, putting and knocked, hit, hit into it, putting a radio station off the air. The baton melted. Do you think he was embarrassed? Do you think he wanted to crawl under a rock, shut the power down to the entire block and street? You ever felt like that? Peter went through it in Mark chapter 14, verse 27. Mark 14, 27, Jesus said to the disciples, you will all fall away. And Peter said, no, not me. It's impossible. Even if all the other apostles fall away, I'll never fall away. Even if I have to die for my faith, I will not disown you. But what happened six hours later when Jesus was arrested and taken to be crucified? The disciples got scared and ran. And when push came to shove, Peter was like, I don't know him. Aren't you one of him? Aren't you one of the disciples? I don't know him. And he denied Jesus three times. And I've seen too many discouraged people throwing in the towel. Oh, I failed. I made mistakes. Yeah, welcome to the club. Sometimes we lose our patience. Sometimes we lose control. Sometimes we forget to pray because we're busy. And look at all the messed up people that God worked with in the Bible days. Look at all the messed up people God still used. I've heard some people say, well, I don't read my Bible and pray consistently. So what's the point in trying? That's really not the right approach. If you're like me, I'm sure you skip a meal sometimes, right? No? Skip breakfast or an occasion? Some say it's the most important meal of the day. Now if you skip a meal, do you get all frustrated and say, I can't believe I skipped a meal. I'm so disappointed with myself. I'm never going to eat again. Is that what you do? 
Oh no, you can't wait for the next meal to come. Because now you're twice hungry. See? So, the enemy wants to come and beat you off. I know this is a simple message, but we got to hear this sometimes. The enemy wants to come to beat you says you're not good enough. But I'm here to tell you, when you think your good isn't good enough, God is still God enough. Because Samson's good wasn't good enough. But God still showed up. And God was still God enough, even though his good wasn't good enough. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were told not to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree, because if they did, they would surely die. However, words like you will die didn't seem to faze them. I don't know about you, but if someone said, don't eat that, you'll die. I'd be like, I like that. That's enough for me. That's a big enough argument. Oh, no. Once again, don't tell people they can't have something because that's the one thing they want. Of course, they ate the fruit in the act of disobedience, the worst mistake ever now caused sin to come into the world and the human race. The human race has suffered because of sin ever since. But on a weekend like this, Jesus Christ, we remember on a Sunday, it's not Communion Sunday, but we remember on a Sunday, Jesus Christ came, died on a cross, rose from the dead, so we can be forgiven of our sins. And like I said a few weeks ago, like, well, why did Jesus Christ have to die? Because he had to be the sacrifice, because back then, God demanded a sacrifice in order to pay for the penalty of sin. Well, why did God do that? He just did. You get pulled over for speeding, they're going to give you a ticket. You can say it's not fair. Well, why should I have to pay a ticket just because I was going too fast? You just do. That's the law. You just do. Doesn't matter if you like it or not. Doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. You just do. And that's the plan that God came up with because there's life in the blood. A penalty has to be paid. But like I said, you can stand in front of the judge... And you can say, I shouldn't have to pay this ticket, it's not fair. The judge will say, you're guilty, boom. Here's the price that has to be paid, whether you like it or not. And then imagine the judge stands up, takes off his robe, comes down, and pays your fine for you. That's how it works with Jesus Christ, amen? amen. We make mistakes, but God isn't angry. He's not frustrated. Or disappointed with you. That, that's not some of the biggest lies. You, I can't tell you how many times over the years somebody's come to me and they're so disappointed in themselves. Listen, I'm here to tell you something. You didn't come to church today to hear God's frustrated with you. You didn't come to church today to hear me say God's disappointed with you. Right? Haven't you had enough people in your life frustrated and disappointed? <laughs> Haven't you? That's not why you, you could. He loves you. He's waiting for you. And I think the first thing we need to do is realize our mistakes as soon as possible, of course. Mark 14, 72 says that when the rooster crowed, when the rooster crowed, Peter remembered that Jesus told him that we did, he would deny him. And Peter had the revelation that he blew it. He made a great mistake. And the Bible says he cried. Peter was sorry for what he did, and that's the first thing we need to do, is realize we made a mistake and say we're sorry. Luke 15, 7 says that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. There needs to be more rejoicing in heaven. He uses us. If there's no party today in heaven, that's on, that's on us. <coughs> Peter made things right with God. In Acts chapter 2, he preached a tremendous sermon, brought 3,000 people to Christ. Well, that's a nice party there. And that's just the start. That was just the start. Because if they rejoice in heaven over one, and 3,000 after one message, he just gave one, the one message, and 3,000, there's a party starting to go that would go on and on for years and years and generations and thousands of years. Peter didn't allow his mistake to be the end of his story. He allowed God's grace 
God's mercy and forgiveness to be bigger. And I've used this illustration before too. And it's, uh, we'd gather on New Year's Eve and, and, and you know, people would get up and tell testimonies. Everybody, well, give me a wave if you, you used to do that back in the day. Ruth, come on, you remember what it was like. And people, you never heard from them all year long. But then when they get a chance to grab the microphone and get up and tell everybody how bad they were. I mean, they just would go on and on and on and on how bad they were. Oh, I went to smoke this. I snorted that. I robbed this guy. And I did this. And I stole cars. And I drag raced on the back roads. And, I would th and they would just say all these horrible, horrible, horrible things. And they'd go on for 20 minutes. And then they'd say, and Jesus saved me. And then they'd sit down. <laughs> You see, <laughs> the real story is his mercy. The real story is his forgiveness. When you're good, isn't good enough. God is still God enough. When David was caught in sin, he tried to cover it up. He tried to dig his way out of it. And you see, oftentimes we get ourselves in a bad situation and we think we can dig our way out. In 1975, convicts at a prison in northern Mexico. In northern Mexico, spent several months digging a secret tunnel, carefully planning to reach beyond the prison walls. The plan worked, but only to a point. The tunnel did, did lead out of the prison as they discovered when they emerged in a nearby courtroom. <laughs> Sometimes trying to dig our way up doesn't quite work. Some people make some big mistakes in life. In only thinking of themselves, they forget about others. In wanting only material things, they forget the joy of giving. In trying to satisfy their body, they forget eternity. Some look at mistakes. However, we have a God who loves us and wants to forgive. 1 Samuel 16 7, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. Keep a heart that wants to serve God even when we make mistakes. That's why David had a heart after God. Even after the mistakes he made. And his repentance, because that whole story of his repentance is quite a large story. But he still wanted to follow after God. We don't have to be perfect for God to use us. There's a chocolate candy called Milk Duds. Do you know what Milk Duds are? You know, that was a total mistake. They were trying to create something else. The Hoffman Company of Chicago, the original producers of the product, was trying to make a perfectly round chocolate-covered caramel. They did not succeed and called the mistake a dud. Not wanting a total loss, the company decided to sell the duds anyway and kept the name. Sometimes you can bring victory over a defeat and success out of a failure. Sometimes God can take your mess and make a miracle. That's what Richard was telling me this morning by the door. Now listen, if Richard tells you that there's no church today, the pastor's gone away, You tell Richard, liars don't go to heaven. <laughs> and I said, now Richard, you stop telling people fibs at the door. And he said, listen, I'm a miracle. And I said, yes, Richard, God's taken a mess and he's made a miracle. We had a little, little Holy Ghost time out there. Now let me tell you something to you believers. 
Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Now, I love you. Don't be quoting that to your unbelieving friends. It's not a scripture for them. It's a scripture for you. Right? So, what do you say we get them to be believers? That when life, their lives are falling apart, we can bring them to Jesus so we can say, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. This is a walk of faith. It's not always easy. I can tell you as a pastor, I'm not perfect. I want to do my best. I make mistakes too. So do you. As a family, we work together. We forgive. Once upon a time, a husband did something a husband did something stupid, which hardly ever happens in the history of mankind. So the wife chewed him out. She chewed him out, and he apologized over and over. They made up. However, from time to time, the wife mentions what he had done. Honey, the husband finally said, why do you keep bringing this up? I thought your policy was to forgive and forget. And she said, I just don't want you to forget that I've forgiven and forgot. <laughs> Aren't you glad God doesn't hold your feet to the fire for something you did 10 years ago? Or when you were in high school and how bad you were? Right? Aren't you glad I'm forgiven? I'm accepted? Well, I guess I'm the only one <laughs> Glad I, are you glad, I'm going to rewind I'm going to say that one more time aren't you glad you're forgiven yes. aren't you glad that God glad covers you with the blood of Jesus Christ yes. when you think you're good is good enough God's still God enough let's stand to our feet and give thanks to the Lord for his forgiveness and his mercy and his grace go ahead Diana
to my dad's car on a snowy day. And 10 minutes later, I was upside down in the ditch. I totaled his car. He didn't have replacement value insurance. He had to go out, get into the car, and was still five grand in debt. See my new car up there, I've got replacement value insurance. <laughs> He came one day, many days later, in with the new car. My brothers and sisters ran outside, were all excited. Just something about that new car smell. And they got in it, went for a drive, and I was up in my bedroom and I looked at them drive away. And I felt terrible, because I was the one who wrecked the car in the first place. So they all went around the block and they came back. And it was just with a few minutes, I could hear someone coming up the steps. My dad opened the bedroom door. And he walked in with just me and him. And he held up the keys like this. He said, we're going for a drive. And he said, you're more important to me than a car. And you're more important than the money. Don't let it make you feel bad. It's done. You're alive. When he saw how bad the car looked, he was glad I was alive. How many times has God saved your life? When you were a young driver driving too fast on a snowy road. Right? How many times has God saved you from disaster? You just didn't know making a mistake and that's what he says to you I know what you've done I know your past it's under the blood of Jesus let's move this let's, re, let's move this relationship forward <laughs> let's move forward and let's see other people come into the mercy and the grace and forgiveness of God amen, amen. Are you glad you came to church today Sermon started a little rough today, but we got there. <laughs> we got there. If you have an offering you'd like to bring today, please feel free. You can bring an offering. We don't tell you. Just give it. If you're brand new and you're and you're uncomfortable, like, well, I don't know, we'll keep listening. That's okay too. That's okay too. But if you do like to bring something, you can at this time. God bless you, everyone. If if you're not scared to do it, give someone a handshake. Give someone a hug. Bless somebody today and love on someone. Practice it here. Do it out there. Amen. God bless you. It's because